here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. It's been a while since I've done an update on my Red Sea tank and since it's been about six months I figured I would give you a six month update. I'm going to talk in this video about some of the fish that I've added, the corals that I've added, the invertebrates that I've put in here. I'm also going to discuss some of the issues that I've had with the tank, um, things that have come about because of those issues, and of course, how I've dealt with them. I'm also gonna go over a few of the things that I've changed with the system since I've made the previous videos. And of course, I'm gonna let you know what you can expect to see in the future. So let's get started talking about the fish that I've added to the tank. Um, in one of my previous series, you might've seen, I did a video um, talking about ORA going to visit, and then we did an unboxing video. And probably due to my excitement, you really didn't get to see that much of the fish that I got. But one of the fish that I added to this tank was a white spotted file fish. He's a super teeny tiny little guy, but um, when I first got him, I was a little bit nervous. I was gonna be, wasn't gonna be able to find him in the system, but since he came out of the acclimation box, he has been cruising around the tank. Um, he's such a good eater, eating everything from copepods. You probably remember I put a whole bunch of copepods in when I first started it, but he's also going after things like pellet food and liquid concentrates, ROE from Reef Nutrition. So he is just a great eater and a fun part of the tank. And I haven't had any issues finding him in the big tank just because he's been so active and is always just kind of front and center. Now the other fish that I added was a clownfish. I worked with Donna at ORA and her and the team hooked me up with the coolest little hybrid storm clownfish. Now, if I'm honest, I really wasn't a huge fan of clownfish. Yes, I have them in my tanks, but they were by no means my favorite. Since I've added the clownfish to this tank, I gotta say he has quickly become one of my favorites from his colors and his pattern and his personality is really just absolutely amazing in the tank. From the moment I put him in here, he really has brought the tank to life. All of the other fish seem to be out and active significantly more than they used to be in the past. So that is a wonderful thing to see. And I am thoroughly pleased with the fish that I've gotten from ORA. If you haven't considered getting some fish from them, I would definitely, definitely encourage it. So that is the fish that I've added to the tank. What about the coral, right? Um, so I went to Reefapalooza Dallas. That was the last show of the year. And there I picked up a peanut butter and jelly, a can, or you might call them a micro lord. I really like the colors of that one. It is pretty cool. And since then, I also added a handful of other gorgeous rainbow micro lords, or you might again call them acans. They are absolutely stunning. Those came from Carolina Aquatics. Thank you so much to Chris. And I gotta say, they are probably the nicest corals that I've ever had the privilege of taking care of in a home tank, so I can't wait to watch them grow. In terms of growth, I've actually seen growth. I've got a couple, um, two or three new mouths on one of them already, so it's pretty exciting to see them having growth within just a month, month and a half of being in my tank. So you know that's a sign of a good healthy tank when you have growth um, in your fish, in your corals, and just happy, good water quality. Now, everything hasn't been rainbows and sunshine, as you would expect with any fish tank that you are taking care of, and this is true with all of the other tanks that I've ever had. At some point, you go through the uglies, and with the cycling Red Sea method, it did go through a very short, quick phase of the uglies, and it came and gone very early on. However, um, earlier this fall, I actually dealt with a case of dinos to the point that my tank was very cloudy a lot of the time. In the mornings, first thing before the lights came on, it would look gorgeous. The sand bed was white and it just, it looked 
such a pretty tank. But as the day would progress, there would get to be bits of brown algae, stringy stuff with bubbles kind of coming up off the rockwork and the sand bed, and it was just not an attractive thing. Every time I would try and do a water change, I would cause a bacterial bloom that would cloud up the water. And so for a while, I was actually afraid to do anything at all at the risk of causing harm to the fish that were in the tank. Now, unfortunately, during this period, I was also traveling a bit. I had somebody else taking care of the tank while I was away, and I did in lose two different corals that I had in here, which is always very sad. You never want to lose corals, but I feel like it's kind of a part of reef keeping. So I'm glad that I figured out what the problem was and got it fixed. So I'd said it was dinos, but how did I fix it? Well, um, when I was running my water chemistry test, my nitrates were zero and my phosphates were zero. In the past, I tend to be a very heavy handed feeder, but that wasn't the case for this tank. So combined the light feeding that I was doing with the really very efficient filtration that is on this Red Sea tank, and I was having some issues. So pretty easy solution. I started feeding the tank more um, a couple of times a day, a little bit a couple of times a day, and I got things back in line. I was prepared to do a treatment. Dr. Tim's Aquatics has a um, dinoflagellates cyano recipe card that is a blackout period in addition to some liquids. Thankfully, I didn't get to that point where I needed to add that, but that was gonna be my next step. So if you're battling dinos, maybe consider looking into that treatment. So another one of the issues that I had in this tank is vermitids. Um, I've had them in previous tanks and I'm fairly certain that's where they came from on the shell of one of the hermit crabs or snails that I moved from one of my existing tanks. So they were starting to build up and populate in this tank. I wanted to go ahead and get them taken care of before they continued to cause a problem, especially because I want to add more corals. Easy solution for that is to get bumblebee snails. So 10 additional bumblebee snails went in the tank probably three or four weeks ago, and they are helping to take care of that problem. Now, something else I've added to the tank along the lines of invertebrates is a pistol shrimp. My local fish store had a Black Friday sale, and so um, they as a part of that sale had pistol shrimp. I've been looking for one for a while to pair up with my Watchman Gobi. I haven't actually seen the pistol shrimp come out yet, but I know he's in there because in the mornings I can hear little pops and cracks. I know that he's in there and he's doing work. And as a result of putting him in there, I've actually seen my Gobi come out into the open a lot more than he used to. So that's always very exciting. So that's gonna take care of the livestock side of things in my tank, but what have I done and changed to the tank since I've made the videos in the past? Well, one of the things is the lighting. Um, when it was just the fish, I wasn't really concerned with the lighting, and then I started having all of the issues with the algae, so I pulled the lights way back down from what they were. When I say way back down, I mean like 10, 15% power. Um, and slowly started increasing it. And then I added corals. And what I've been doing with the corals, so to not shock them, I've been increasing the percentage of the light each week, about 5% for the blue and the white channel. So right now it's about, I think we're at 35%. I don't need the lights to go up to full strength. I've already told you these corals are doing great. They are um, opening up completely, they're growing, so they're happy. I don't wanna do any quick changes with them. I'm very happy with how things are running. Another change I have made to this tank is in regards to the skimmer. Now, in the previous video about the skimmer, I told you I took out that little PVC riser that I had made for the protein skimmer, but even after setting it up on the automated system, I was still having issues getting it dialed in. So I went ahead and put that little riser back in the tank. Haven't had any issues since, and it has been running super smooth. So if you have any issues with skimmers, um, maybe consider raising it up just a little bit in the water column. I bet that will solve a lot of your problems. Now, something else that I've done with the skimmer, and this was kind of in regards to the um, dino issue, is that I have it on a schedule and I don't leave it running all of the time. Because it's so efficient, that combined with the filtration that's already in here, I wanna make sure that I'm leaving some of those nutrients in the tank so I don't have dino problems again. 
Now, you might be wondering what happened to the roller filter that was a part of the original setup. Well, I still have that. It's one of the things that I'm waiting on installing. Just wanna make sure that everything is up and running before I put that really super, very efficient filtration on the tank and remove the filter socks. Now, another thing that I still have to add to the tank is the dosing pump. Um, I've got it all set up, but I still have to put those bottles in there and start the dosing and set up the system on the ReefBeat app. That is something that is coming, I suspect, probably in the new year. Once I start to add more corals, they're really not utilizing a lot of the nutrients in the water. So I'm hesitant to start adding stuff if I don't necessarily need it yet. So those are definitely videos that you can keep an eye out for. And you know that I will let you know as soon as I add some more fish to the tank and add more corals. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I would love to hear how your fish tank has progressed and what your six month in fish tank looks like. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.